Hello. So in this video, I'm going to do two things. First thing I'm going to do is talk a little bit about rainfall hyatographs, which are basically just a visual representation of a rainstorm. And then I'm going to detail intensity, duration, frequency curves and show how we can create those to use historic rainfall to predict future storms. So rainfall hyatograph is a visual representation of how rainfall varies over time. And this is what it looks like, maybe. There we go. Um, so what this is, as you can see, and I drew one of these earlier in a previous video, on the x-axis we have time, and on the y-axis we have rainfall intensity. In this case, it's in inches per hour. Notice the time increment here, though, is 10 minutes. So the first 10 minutes, it rains 0.8 inches per hour. So you get about 0.13 inches of rain in that first hour. When we look at these curves, there's three different uh, things that we want to look at, and they are intensity, duration, and frequency. So intensity is the volume of water that falls over some specific time period. And the duration is the length of time that the storm lasts. So in this case of this storm, we had a 60 minute duration. The frequency is how often to expect some particular event. event. So this storm, if you add it up, the one that I is shown above, this storm has a total of 1.43 inches of water. And it would be helpful to know how often we would get a storm of that of that intensity. Another way to visualize this hyatograph is to look at what is called a cumulative rainfall hyatograph. So this has the same duration, but instead of having the intensity change, it's accumulating how much total rainfall has fallen during that event. And sometimes what we like to do on the is it can be helpful to normalize this so that rather than showing time in minutes, what we end up having is time over the duration and so that the max becomes one and the minimum becomes zero. So this is just normalizing this from zero to one. And then over here, rather than rainfall depth, we're gonna have the depth of precipitation, so that is P, over the total depth. So that again, we max this out at 1.0 and start it at zero. And the reason that that is helpful is because it allows us to look up these normalized rainfall distributions so that we could estimate if we knew how much total rainfall fell in a particular storm, we could estimate the distribution of that rainfall during the storm. And so the uh, US government, the NRCS, which is the National Resource Conservation something Services in part of the USDA, has these um, distributions available based on geographic location in the country. So Santa Clara is here in this section, which is a type one rainfall distribution. So if we look at the SCS rainfall distribution, we are type one, which is this central one here. Okay, so we talked about intensity and we talked about duration, which is the total time from the first rainfall, raindrop to the last raindrop in any storm. Now we're gonna add in frequency. And so frequency is a way to explain how often, it's a, it's a probability, how often to expect any particular storm. So what we would like to be able to do is use historic data to estimate future storms. So for example, you might hear, and I'm going to explain further what this means, that we just had a 100 year, one day or 24 hour storm. So what does that mean? In this terminology, we have both a duration given and a frequency. The frequency is that 100 year. 
The 100 year is actually what we call a return period. And it tells you how often you would expect a storm of that intensity. So this means that we would expect a storm one once every 100 years. Okay, so this is another way to do probabilities and it's a common way that's talked about in water resources. And then this 24 hour storm is the duration. So that suggests that the very first, the time between the very first raindrop and the last raindrop is 24 hours. And so to, one way that we use this to predict future storms using this information is to use an IDF curve. I'm going to show some additional IDF curves some that the government have made, but just quickly. IDF curves have duration on the x-axis. They can be shown different ways. And then intensity on the y-axis. And then to bring in the frequency, we will have curves. Maybe this green one is a five-year curve. And then we might have a 50-year curve, meaning that once every 50 years we would expect those. And then we might have a 100-year curve. All right, so now I'm going to talk about how you can create an IDF curve, an intensity, duration, frequency curve. There's a set of steps you can follow. The first thing you need to do is to get annual precipitation data. So you guys um, looked a little bit at the data available online, all the different gauges online. So you can use that to get historic data, long records of data. So you'll get uh, some precipitation data and you might be able to plot it and create a figure like this. So when you download all the data, you might be able to plot it and show for each year the precip total precipitation of some particular duration. The next thing that you do is pick the duration that you are interested in and find the maximum intensity for each of the years that you've downloaded for that duration storm. Okay, so maybe you wanna look at a 24 hour storm. So you're gonna look through all your data that you download and find the maximum 24 hour storm in each year of your record. The more years of data you have, the more robust that your IDF curve is gonna be. The next thing that you're gonna do is set up a table that ranks IMAX, okay? So what this might look like is you're going to have across the top rank, we're gonna call that M, I max in inches per hour. The return period, T, which this is gonna be like the 10 year or 100 year example. And then we'll calculate the probabilities for that. Okay, so for example, let's just say I was able to get 99 years of data. And so I'm gonna rank them from one to 99. And from the maximum intensity to the lowest. Okay, so number one, the highest I got for the particular duration I picked was eight inches per hour, even though that might be for a 24 hour storm. My six year old is mocking me as I'm making this lesson right now. <laughs> it's just like I have students. It's great. Thank you, Claire, for being here. Let me know if you have any questions, okay? Okay. So, um, for example, maybe this eight inches per year happened in 1997, right? So it doesn't matter the years. And I picked 97 because I know that that was a very wet year. And then maybe this 7.6 inches per hour for a 24-hour storm happened in 1937, okay? So it really doesn't matter the order. It's just ranking. And then maybe this last one happened in 19 or 2015 right that was a very dry year okay so the next thing that we're going to calculate is the return period and the return period we calculate i'll write this equation down in a second but for the first year it's going to be equal to 99 plus 1 so this 99 is the total number of years of data that you have, and I'm going to divide that by 1. 
so that my return period here is 100. Okay. My probability is going to be 1 over that return period. So it's 1 over t. So this is 0.01 or 1%. All right, I'm going to skip down to 3. So on the third year, my return period is 99 plus 1 over 3, which is equal to 33. And that is going to have a probability of 1 over 33, which is 0 0.03 or 3% per year. And if we go all the way to the very last year, we can continue this, we can find the return period of 99 plus 1 divided by 99 which is approximately one, giving us a probability of one or a 100% chance in any year that we'll see a 24-hour storm event of that intensity. So just to generalize this return period equation, the return period T is going to be equal to N plus one divided by N. N is the total number of records that you have. In this case, it was 99. And then M is the rank, okay? So the first one is gonna be one, the last one is gonna be 99 in our example. And then again, your probability is one over T. All right, so we're not quite done yet. So we have our first three steps. Our next step, and again, this is just, I had to rename it for, is to interpolate to get our desired T, okay? So when we did our ranking, we didn't exactly find one that was a 20 year storm. So we may have to interpolate between a 33 year storm and a uh, 15 year storm to find the 20 year storm, okay? And then you're gonna repeat steps one through four for any additional durations. This should be a delta, didn't quite compute, this is, any additional durations or delta t's that you're interested in. And then you generate your IDF curves. So the first thing I do when I generate my IDF curves is create a table that looks something like this, right? So I'm gonna have my return periods that I'm interested in, all the different durations, and then the values of the storms in them. Okay, so let me just interpret for really quick what some of these values mean. So I'm going to pick this 20. So that might be 20 inches per hour because that's, that's an intensity. And so this 20 is my intensity. This up here, this 30 minutes is my duration. And the 50 year is my frequency. Okay, so I have intensity, duration, and frequency. So Lucky for us, I will still go through the practice of trying to create an IDF curve, but the government, um, NOAA, the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Association, has created IDF curves in what they call their Atlas 14 for most of the U.S., okay? And so this is the data from the IDF curve um, from Atlas 14 for San Jose. So you can see that this looks like just an expanded form of the previous um, table that I generated. So just as an example, okay, now I got the dog trying to get in on the action, Pepper. I'm going to circle this number, this 0.464, okay? So a few things here. First of all, that 0.464 is the intensity, okay? So this is the intensity in inches per hour that you would expect on a duration of 30 minutes at a frequency of every 10 years, okay? So that 0.464, you'll notice, has a range. So NOAA, the uh, scientists at NOAA, when they do this, they have so much data that they can have a confidence interval. So they're saying that actually for a 30 minute storm, duration 30 minutes, frequency of 10, 
And so that one over 10 means 10% chance of any storm being of this intensity. You're gonna get about 0.464 inches per hour of rain. Okay, so that's what that means. Well, I'll put up a little quiz here to test your uh, skills on figuring out the intensity, duration, and frequency from this type of data. So it might be easier to look at this if you are looking at the curve. So this again is from the NOAA Atlas 14. So you can hop right onto um, just Google NOAA Atlas 14 and look this information up for any area of interest to you. And so this just shows it as a plot. So again, we have duration on the x-axis. We have the intensity. This is total rainfall for the storm here in this particular figure. Um, and then that's on the y-axis. And then the uh, frequency is shown as the different colored lines. So that's one way to represent the data. Forget. Another way to represent the data, this is the same data just shown in a different, different way, is by having the frequency on the y-axis. The precipitation total depth is again on the y-axis, and then the different colors in this particular case are the different are the different durations of rainstorm.